So welcome back to the Installer Spotlight series. I'm your host, Jess Shanahan. And during our session with Angela Rushforth, we talked about the role everyone has to play in encouraging more women into the industry. While we're here to celebrate women's stories, it's important not to overlook the role of allies. Jerry Whiteley is exactly that. As technical manager of CIPHE and the head judge for the Hip Learner of the Year competition, amongst others, Jerry is committed to inspiring the next generation of professional installers. Welcome, Jerry. Would you be able to start by telling us a bit more about uh, your role and your experience? Yeah, um, well, I, I, I like many, I started out uh, when I left school, really, at 16, and uh, lucky enough to go straight into an apprenticeship. I know that's uh, lucky enough because it it does work an awful lot in the industry as to who you know uh, to get into the industry, and that's the typical of how I got into the industry and many others uh, since. So uh, yeah, I went through an apprenticeship and, uh, which was five years long back then at the time. So you sort of twenty one when you came out of it. Uh, stayed at that company for about thirteen years or so with them, and uh, went through into sort of foreman and uh, management roles on site. So I was running sites by the time I was, certainly by the time I was 21 anyway, coming out of my apprenticeship, I was ordering people around, as they say, um, not literally, but uh, that, that's the kind of thing you sort of run the job. And uh, eventually sort of got to the point where I've been there, done, I got a t-shirt. I've, I've always wanted to be self-employed. So I did that for quite some years, so probably another 13 years or so being self-employed and actually took on apprentices uh, during that process as well. Then I went into teaching and learning and um, loved it. I found something I could give something back, which is what teaching and learning is all about. And that led into sort of a fast track into management roles as well in education. Spent so quite some years from teacher through to uh, sort of head of faculty, as they used to call it, things like that. And then this uh, this job came up uh, as the technical manager at the CIPHE, uh, which I've been doing now for the last five years. And again, it's, it's a nice thing to do because you're always giving something back, sharing knowledge, and supporting people in the industry with all the things I've learned really over the years. And it's things like that you sort of give back for things that they'll come across in their uh, career paths and things like that that you can advise people. So, yeah, it's, a, it's been a, a great career up to now. I loved every minute of it. Yeah, that's brilliant. And so, obviously, in, in different roles throughout the industry, have you, what has your experience been of, of, of how the role of women has changed? over recent years so maybe from when you first came in the industry to now are you seeing more women in these roles only slightly not massively mm. there's still a lot of work to do there are more women in the roles without a doubt and it's great to see those stepping up and, and i see a lot more now through things like the, the um competitions and things like that where you get more women entering from that angle as well but yeah there is more women uh, per se in the industry it's not just people on the tools as well it's across the spectrum, so it could be retail mm. side of things or in management and so forth. So it's really good to see that uh, diversity building up. And obviously, having worked in education and now, you know, sharing skills and knowledge in the way that you do, how how do you think the 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 wider labour landscape has changed over the years? So obviously, it feels like we're very much in the middle of a, a labour shortage. What do you think is contributing to that and how has that kind of evolved since you entered the industry? I think there's many things that contribute towards skill shortages, many things. Um, so I think some of it is the, the, the status quo of the industry itself, whereas today I would say probably 90% of the industry is a sole trader. So whereas back in my day, there were companies where they'd probably employ more apprentices, seven, eight apprentices or more. Now, they're sole traders and they'll think twice about how they go about taking somebody on in as mm. much as they plan next week, not next year. So it, it financially, those those barriers that have hit them from that for planning in a lot of ways is not, not helpful. So it's quite a challenge. I don't think it's any different getting into the industry at, at today. You know, I, I talk to a lot of people, what got them started? And it's always um, they, they left school. My dad's been a plumber, or I knew somebody else who's been a plumber. And then, how did you get into the industry? Well, it's somebody I knew, or it was through my father who knew somebody, and that kind of thing. It's rare you hear so, see somebody say, "Well, I went for a formal interview." It's quite rare <laughs> that that actually occurs. Um, back in my day, it would have done, but today, because the sole trade is, it's start Monday and see what you like. Mm. 
So how important would you say that it is to to bring more women in the industry in order to kind of widen that labour pool? Absolutely, because there's so many opportunities. There really is. We're so desperately short of people to come to the industry, and especially with all the technologies changing now uh, quite rapidly. You know, um, gone are the days when, let's say, when I was younger, we fitted boilers that were made of cast iron and you had to struggle getting them on the walls and all those kind of things. Now it, it's everything's high tech. Um, technology leading obviously towards all the low carbon or zero carbon agenda so that the 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 work itself changed a lot in that regard so i think there's opportunities especially for the women to come in or females to come into the industry whereby there's so many pathways that they could possibly come into it even if it's not even on the tools as i say not everyone ends up on the tools mm. that's, that's a misnomer it shouldn't be that that think of being a plumber on the tools but coming into the industry Absolutely. There's many opportunities because of skill shortages or job shortages that are across the piece. I say it could be retail, it could be on the tools. Nothing wrong with being on the tools. I think it's a fantastic journey. It's, it's served me well all my life. You know, I've, I've made a, a good living out of it, I'll say. And I've never had a day off work forced upon me. So it's sustained me in a career. And I'd recommend it to anybody to come in and do so. It's the challenge getting in. Uh, and females are that bit more difficult, of course, because they're a bit more unique in some ways. But if you flip that round into a positive and say, actually, that uniqueness is a good selling point because it really is. Mm -hmm. And my experiences of working with uh, females coming in through competitions or when I was in teaching and learning, they're 10 times better than the blokes. They're great. I love what they do. I mean, just now we're in the female competitions finishing up next uh, two weeks time and the standard of work is phenomenal. So it's not really about gender. Uh, gender it's about can you do it and the people can it's as simple as that step up prove you prove your point prove your worth and you'll do very well that's brilliant so what would you say for for anyone who's looking to get into the industry be it um you know in any role on the tools or otherwise mm. what would you what would your advice be for anyone that kind of wants to enter and wants to find out more where where would they start starting point i suppose is doing your research really about the industry itself and looking at what sort of careers there are across that. Um, the, there are various uh, sources of information across the internet that you can pick up from that regard or through us, through the CIPHG as well. And it's about researching it through as to where you think you might sort of uh, see your career path going. There are many career paths in the industry. As I say, you've got the net zero pathway, which I would strongly recommend to anybody to, to participate in, because that's growth, growth, growth. Um, people seem to think the gas industry is the way forward. Well, there's 120,000 people in that. In the net zero industry, there's about 5,000 people. Which ones were got the growth? You know, shows you obviously. Yeah? And I keep saying this to people when I meet them. So get involved, learn about the uh, the net zero agenda, pick up on that, and that's the, the type of thing. So when you then look for companies where there will be apprenticeships in that area, net zero or low carbon, whichever phrase you want to use. If you've done a bit of research into it, all you want to see mostly is enthusiasm and passion for what you want to do. And that'll get it over the line because the rest of it you'll learn on the job. That's great advice. So um, looking more at your kind of your experience and the work you do with different competitions, how would you say that the Learner of the Year competition, the All Female Skills competition and, and others play a role in encouraging more women and also more people into the industry and kind of showcasing those skills? Yeah, you're right. It does. It showcases those skills and, and, and the attitudes and behaviours of people as they come along. So the beauty of that is to get involved in any competition, really. It, you know, it could be world skills, UK skills, any of them. It's a great thing to do because it puts you on that platform. I'll give you an example. I was at Lewisham College just re recently, and there was a female skills competition there that they do every year, and I, I judged that one for them. We have a, an employer there that's one of the main organisers. He offered them all a job. Um, now you, yeah, every one of them, there was six, seven girls there. Every one of them was offered a job there and then. Uh, so. The opportunities are there. It's, it's been in the right place at the right time, uh, using a competition as a platform. And, and you know, just it, it's once somebody sees what you're capable of as well, such as, as through a competition, you know, the, 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 the people who arrive at the competitions through the heats and, and in particular at the finals in particular, are the people who are running the businesses. So mm. they can see what, what it is that they potentially could tap into. So, yeah, win-win competitions, definitely get involved.
Absolutely. So I just kind of want to finish on looking at it from from the the other side of things. So what can organizations do to encourage more women into the industry and also to nurture the talent they already kind of have within within themselves? It's picking up the role models, I think, that are out there today. So uh, I'll, I'll name a name, a, a real classic uh, name name I'll go for, Sophie McGuire. She's a really good young lady. She's in a fourth year, I think, now of a plumbing apprenticeship. And she does superb work. She's actually in the competitions. I shouldn't really say too much about it because she, <laughs> she's really, really good. I love what she does. Um, and, and she's just a natural. That's what it is. She's a natural to do it. And she's just got that right attitude and behaviour, what she demonstrates as she goes through. And it's and you see that time and time again in many other people. So mm. it's about coming into the industry with no airs and graces type of thing. Just come in, enjoy it, and uh, put passion and enthusiasm in what you do. People will build upon that and see that. And that uniqueness, being the female within the industry, you know, because it would be that from that point of view, acts as a good, good point. Um, certainly if you're thinking of later on into business and things like that, it gives you opportunities where people want a woman to come through the door, not a man. In many scenarios in that kind mm. of thing, that occurs. Um, but it's it's open to everybody. So it's about coming in, building up upon your uh, ability and passion. And eventually you can end up in that situation where you can be run, running a business. There's, there's many good women out there doing just that today with lots of people uh, working underneath them within the business and doing very, very well. It's, it's a good industry to get involved with because it's it's a sustainable, it's a career, it's not a job. Mm. That's the key with this. It's something that when you come in at whatever age, let's say it's the younger age at 16, 17, you're there for life, you know, and even if you're coming in doing a career change, it's still a challenge, don't get me wrong, but ultimately once you get into it after a couple of years into the industry, you have a job for life and people don't realise that. I mean, I'll give you an example during the pandemic people started to clock that actually police fire nurses doctors plumbers hold on a minute why are we all off work on furlough there lies the answer you need the plumber heating engineer male or female and that's why it's a job for life absolutely and um, that's a, a great answer and it's also fantastic that you mentioned sophie because she is also another interviewee on this spotlight series oh, so absolutely. that's a great a great segue into our uh, next session jerry thank you so much for your time and thank you to everyone for watching i hope you'll be able to join us on the 27th of june at the installer show where we'll be speaking to all of our wonderful spotlight guests in a special panel session thank you very much <laughs>